still not working. <laughs> How are we doing for sound now, my dears? Let me check my own sound. Let me see if I can hear me. Honestly. <laughs> oh, lives. They're never what you expect. <laughs> I find myself. I'm live here on Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Okay, so hopefully you actually heard me talking to myself there. So yay, on, I do not know. I do not know. The more I go live, the less I know about the technology. Thank you guys. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Michelle. Anyhow, with all of that said, welcome to the second episode. <laughs> Let me start that again, honestly. Ta-da! <laughs> welcome to the second episode of Miss TV, my dears. Very delighted to be here with you. Um, I have fixed my camera issue, which means that I can see all of my captions and I can move them around. But of course, it also means that I can, I had no sound. Anyway, someday we will get it all right. Someday I will have a static setup. I need a second microphone, I think is the thing. Um, who needs a second microphone though? Anyway, onwards, my dears. So it's been a pretty funky week. Um, so what kind of week has it been? Knitting wise, I did a lot more knitting than I was expecting. I got some carnation knitting in. So if you were watching carnation, I hope you enjoyed it. If you were not watching the carnation, that is also fine. <laughs> For those of you who are not in the UK, you might have noticed that uh, King Charles III was crowded. Um, my pin, so I, an interesting thing, watching it as someone who is not from the United Kingdom is both, like it's really interesting, but it's also a bit sort of surprising. But you know what? I am a guest in this country. So I live here on, uh, probably on, you know, I live here as a guest of the country, so whatever you guys like to do is entirely up to yourselves. <laughs> as someone from a, like a country where we elect a president, who actually at the moment the Irish president is Michael D. Higgins. Some of you will know him, some of you won't. He's a very interesting man, um, but the Irish presidential term is like seven years, so it's a little bit longer. If you search for Irish president and his dogs, you will see why he's really well known. He's also a super smart man um, who does, is a great representative of Ireland. But just in passing, our president, very delighted with him. But I know that not everybody's delighted with that. So, you know, horses for courses or kings for countries, depending on what you think. Anywho, I'm a guest, so I enjoy it here. So whatever incarnation you guys want to have. Um, so yes, uh, so I did loads of knitting during that. So I will show you that. I also had the most exciting conversation for knit school members. Actually, some of you are on with me. I was talking to the amazing Sylvia Watts Cherry. So some of you will know Sylvia. I met Sylvia first when we were both on Christie's Handmade Christmas together. Uh, so I met Sylvia, Helen and Jamie on that. And I think we had such a good time, the four of us. You know, when you meet four people and you think, oh, I just love the three of you. Um, so we were really fortunate. I think other episodes of that Christmas jumper competition haven't gone quite as nicely, uh, but we got on super well. Um, so I was talking to Sylvia and she was coming to mid school in September to do a class on Tarja in the Road. So I am oh, beyond excited. Um, and she also has a pattern as well, which I'm doing the for. So that's kind of my knitting world uh, this week. Um, I hope everyone has had a lovely, I'd love to know what everybody else's knitting week has been like. I'm also very excited. I have, um, I normally don't sample knit. Uh, for like patterns or anything like that. I do my own samples, but I don't normally have time. But I'm between projects at the moment and this kind of opportunity came up to sample it for somebody quite exciting and I can't talk about it except that. Uh, so that was beyond exciting. Um, so I did that as well. And it's ridiculously exciting. Anyway, I'll talk way more about that when I can, but I can't right now. So in terms of knitting then, and I'm going to change across, do, 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 on the next section. Oh, and I don't have to bend around the screen this time, thankfully. I finished one project. So I finished my Changing Light, which I think I was doing last week. Yeah, I was. So this is my Changing Light in Undyed Yarn. So it is very, very beautiful. And it is uh, Wiseman. What is her first name? Honestly, I said I would remember. Anyway, Changing Light, you will find it on Ravelry. And I just adore it. It is beautiful in the natural yarn. So I'm just, I love it. It's in the yak silk in the center. Then it's in what we call the angel base in a gray and then out into the cream. I will show you though that I made a big booby in it. A big booby. Made a boo-boo here. 
So I was, I got into the car, driving to my mom, mother-in-law's, because we were going to all watch it together. Um, and we had, like, it was all good. We had all the things on board and we were ready. We had snacks and, um, <laughs> snack, I like a snack. Um, and I got into the car and I was knitting this section. And I was right, right, I've done knit row that I must be on a knit section. And then I knit this piece here. This piece is not in the pattern at all. Uh, I added this like extra bit. <laughs> so it has one side is slightly longer than the other. And it has a small extra like 12 row panel of garter stitch. And I know that wouldn't be for everybody, but I figured it would be fine. And I didn't feel like going back. And I was like, no, let's just let's just correct the pattern and go on. So sometimes you can just live with things and sometimes you cannot. So you'll see on this side, no extra garter panel. And on this side, you will see sneaky garter panel in here. So you know what? It's an extra inch of warmth. So I love, I have to say, this is just beautiful. I made it slightly bigger, so I did an extra kind of, I think I ended up with another X number of stitches. Uh, if you want to know, I took a photograph of it. So if you are making a change in light and you'd like to make it slightly bigger, I did take photographs of the modifications I made to the pattern because I may make it one more time, although I might not. I think I've made it. Four times I think that's enough but it's it's just and it is undyed yarn it is magic the undyed yarn that I used is available from uh, blue face sister no not blue face sister blueface.com they're the uh, uh they're one of the online uh, undyed stores here in the UK and it is very magnificent so that's the first thing I've been knitting this week second thing is very exciting as actually I'm always very excited <laughs> this is my um my first of two this is the uh Sock number one from Helen Stewart's Sock Society Knit Along this year. And I have to say, it's, um, <laughs> I have to say, it's just, it's fab, really fab. I love it. Um, so it's got a one by one rib and it has a really, really clever four stitch repeat. So it's got a knit and then three pores and then it has a, like, um, a really interesting yarn over effect that's really clever. I think it'll take a good bit of blocking to get those to go straight but I don't think I really care that much. They're really nice. Um, it has a reinforced heel, which I love, and she uses the same shape heel I use. So that's, well, my new heel that I started using in my this, uh, my this and that socks, which I've added now to all of my um, straightforward socks. It's got to be all of them, so I like it better than the square heel. Um, really neat. I think I made them ever so slightly too large, actually. Made a modification to the pattern as well, because when I was knitting this piece, hmm, did I swatch, did I? Look, a sock is a swatch, really. It's so swatch sized. <laughs> so I just got, I thought it was a little bit big here at the top for me because I, it's on a 2.25, 72 stitches. And I would normally do my 72 stitches on a two mil. And, but I thought I'd risk it and I thought, mm, it's a little bit big. But I did take four stitches. It was actually quite straightforward to take four stitches out of the foot of the sock and it fits better. Um, and that's one thing I would say to you as well, by the way, if you need extra leg space, um, Cast out as many stitches as you want, then decrease them out as you come to the ankle and then make your normal foot size. Because that's what I've done in the pattern. I have a pattern coming up for knit school. I called it the nosy neighbor socks. Yay! Um, coming on at the start of May and it's done a mosaic knitting. But I needed the top to be a little bit wider to match the stitch repeat. And I also thought people could do a little bit more generous size up there. And then what I do is I decrease out the extra stitches to use my standard um, 2.5 number of stitches. So I thought that would work. So you can just modify away to make yourself happy. On to the second one. Do, do, do. Like all things, I know that some people are mad about two time socks. I'm not. <laughs> I'll talk about that at some point though. I think I'm going to call that episode my most hated knitting technique for myself. Um, And then I have the second one. So when I'm doing second socks, I try to cast on the rib straight away the minute I finish one or I knit them at the same time with two sock wonders. But this time I'm actually using the um. Sock wonders don't come at 2.25. So that is why I have either Chogu shorty. Now, of course, they're about that much longer. They're about that much longer. I think they're about a centimeter longer than the sock wonders, even when you combine them. So they make them a little bit back, bigger. But anyway, that's it. That's neither here nor there. I'm still in the same place on my last sock. This one has not moved on. It's just, I think this is going to be lurking for a while. But I do know what my two next projects are. I think. I think so I have this from the sweater I must unravel this is one of the balls and I was like if I put it into a sock I'll have to unravel the rest of it because I won't have enough to finish the sweater so I'm tempting myself with that and then 
I knit this, it's from two sets of Luxury Yarns, or Kitty Luxury Yarns Clubs, but I made it too long. It's made out of 600 grams and it is uh, it is just that bit too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unravel it. I'm not gonna unravel it. I'm going to knit it off the top. Where am I? Because mohair is such, taking mohair, winding it into balls, I'm just gonna knit it straight from the project. It'll take a while, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make myself another love note. Now it's a bit pale. You can see as I hold it up, I look poorly. Uh, if I hold this up, I look like a lobster. Uh, but I think I can combine in the greens with the purple um, and make it a little bit nice. I'm a, not a pastel person. I'm not. I'm too. I'm too high coloured, I guess, uh, for pastels. But I'm going to turn that into a love note. So that's my other project that I want to cast on. So when I take, and even when I take out, I think once I've taken out even two hundred grams of that, I'll still have plenty. I'll have enough for a love note, and I'll have enough for still long enough for sure. So that is what's on my needles right at the moment. Um, so next on to what's going on around the community. <laughs> that will never get old. I feel like I'm on like TV or something. Um, so what is going on? If you're not a Louise Tilbrook fan, make sure you check out, I think she's probably sent it out. It might just be in her newsletter, but it might also be in her Facebook group. Um, she has just done this really cool thing with mitre squares. Now I'm not, I'm actually it's something we're teaching in knit school in July, no August maybe. It depends, we have a textured knits class coming up um, and I want to teach you know how to make those lovely mitre square blankets. Um, but she's just done a really interesting thing where she's weighed out um, how much double knitting weight yarn you need for each one. Um, so that's really useful if you are somebody who's using up double knitting for making blankets plus you can hold four by double so do check out Louise's post on that um what else knit note some of you might have seen it they're an app they are having a crowdfunder starting shortly so you can follow them um <laughs> the reason I know they're having a crowdfunder is I follow them because I follow like I think I follow I think I get everybody's newsletter um they're a cute app they're really nice oh and also out oh, with a new app as well are two can knits so do look out for that's going to be I haven't downloaded it yet because I just haven't had time, but anything that Tin Candidates does is spectacular. Uh, Knit Note are having a crowdfunder. I don't know what the offers are. It's about to come out, but it'll be out shortly. Now, I have to admit, while I did know, <laughs> well, I did know that they were doing it because I have emails from them, I also saw it on Craftsnark on Reddit. So for those of you, again, who haven't been on Craftsnark, <laughs> It's where people who want to be snarky hang out like and that's fine because you know you can't everything can't be sweetness and light but i would say that it's not you know i would give it a chance <laughs> before i snark about it there's been a few apps have come out to do pattern licensing it's a funny model with pattern licensing like because really as part of knit school you get a set of patterns but i i guess they're mine so it's my decision around them and they're kind of talking about designer patterns and multiple things anyway we won't snark yet i'm not gonna i don't like to snark anyway because i Kind of, I want, the, I think the more people who are knitting, the happier we are. I do a small bit of snarking, but not too much. <laughs> uh, also, while I was there, somebody sent me that. And while I was in Craft Snark, I noticed that there was also, um, people were giving out about YouTubers, not me, I'm too teeny tiny for this, uh, about knitting YouTubers who'd suddenly started saying, you know, oh, you know, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and behaving like people on YouTube. The funny thing about that is that is what well, works on YouTube. Like, I follow people and they're like oh do subscribe like my video and i'm like i actually i will because i like you so i don't know if it's a problem that they're behaving like like it, it takes quite a bit of effort to put together videos and stuff particularly some of the people who write these most amazing like knitting blogs and stuff i'm not saying me i'm live i do it live because it's because <laughs> i like it even though it's a bit flaky um but do you know don't i wouldn't be turned off by people trying to make a living from youtube it is a very legitimate way of making money i follow a guy named mr ballen i think mr he might be mr b allen he tells stories and i definitely follow him you know and do i mind that he every now and again he talks about his i think he calls his frog a lone worm or something i don't know what it is i'm happy to follow him you know I, you know you only have to follow people if you like them uh so yeah with that said though do like and subscribe <laughs> if you fancy it um so yeah that's kind of what's been going on around the place a little bit of snark some new apps coming um and obviously Louise is doing interesting things uh Cara Feller's first clue is also out for her uh if you don't follow Carol Carol is awesome she's an Irish designer she's from Cork uh her new yarn is really really nice 
So again, maybe follow her. If you have any news you want to post, pop it in the chat and uh, I can actually make it appear in front of everybody um, as well as I can pop it up on the screen. <laughs> so if you have any knitting news that you'd like to share or you have any yourself, like even a new yarn release or a pattern or anything that you've seen really share, because the more, the more, the merrier with knitting. Like there's no point in gatekeeping it. Um, you know, there's just not. So that's that. Now, as promised, we were going to keep talking about patterns. So I have made some notes. So I'm going to very quickly flip over to my notes. It's And I, I make notes because although I talk too fast and I get I forget what I'm trying to talk about. So I thought, thought I would make some notes. So in last week's chat, we were talking generally about knitting patterns um, and how the quality varies and how it's good to find out what you want. But I, So this week I'm going to talk about what to look for in a knitting pattern. Um, I'm going to talk about sizing because I think size is really important. And then I'm going to talk about how size relates to gauge and tension. Some of you are going to tune out because that's not a conversation you want, but some of you may not have talked about that before. And then in next week's um, session, I'm going to talk, I'm going to show you some of the oddities of knit patterns because I think they're the ones where people go, what is that? Um, and I'm going to show you how to read repeats and stuff like that. I know it's very basic, but you know what? I saw a pattern this week and I had not used two or three of the techniques in it. And I was like, oh, this is, whew, this looks daunting. And then, I, and then I settled into it and I was like, oh, actually, this is great. But at first I was like, ooh, that's very new. And then I was like, oh, this is great. So you kind of, sometimes, it, you know, every, sometimes you just like, there's no point in knitting where you're not going to come across something new. So it's always nice to have a bit of a refresher of a pattern. So things to look for um, in a knitting pattern. You should be seeing in most patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about things you should see bonuses that you might get and then like extras <laughs> so things there where the designer has definitely gone i think above and beyond whether you think that or not is entirely you know up to you so what i look for first is really good sizing so i'm um, we'll talk more about size in a minute but things that you really want with with sizing particularly something that's meant to fit so it's less important with things like um shawls although you do need to have like an idea of how big it is we'll talk about how to know that as well um so things like you know does it have multiple sizes particularly for hats uh socks you know one size does not fit all unless it's like a shawl and even then again i'll talk about that in a sec um garments does it have enough sizes now i'll talk about this in size as well is about size inclusivity and sometimes that's a big hurdle for designers to cross so it's that's a, there's a balance to be had there, but I'll talk about that too. But making sure that it has a size that fits you is quite a good idea. Um, the other thing then is, is how much detail does it go into? So does it have a fit measurement? So does it have a recommendation around how this garment fits best? Although obviously that's subjective. Uh, does it have a finish size? So does it have a finish size? Like what size will the actual knitting be when you're finished it? So what size is it the best on, but also how big are each piece when it's finished? And also, are there more than one, was there more than one measurement? So for example, a chest measurement is no good to you without having maybe a length, arm length, widths of the arms and sleeves. Sleeve, um, trying to think of the word, uh, sleeve depth. Um, there's another word for it, but I can't think of it. Um, like, does it have enough measurements for you to know that it's going to fit you? Um, is it in inches and centimetres? Obviously, you need to have... Again, though, that's a nice to have because it depends on where you're buying. I know that US patterns tend to have inches only and more and more here in Europe, I'm seeing only metric. I try to do mine in both, but sometimes I get a bit flaky um, because I, I think inches is how I see knitting still. Like, I, it's something I haven't been able to change over to. Um, does it have a schematic? Does it show you how it's going to come together? So all those things around size are really important because the more size information you have, the more you can decide, will I make this? And B, will it fit me when I do? And do I need to make adjustments to it? So the more size information the pattern gives you, the better. Um, do pay attention to it because it's very easy to say, right, that's the finished size. I'm going to make that. And if it's supposed to have different levels of ease, we'll talk about ease and size, you know, it, do look at the sizing because that's something that people don't always look at. I know you're just like, I'll make that size, but I'll talk about that in a second. So that's the thing. Then needles and uh, notions. Does it tell you um, how many needles you need? No, you know, what size are they? If a pattern doesn't tell you about the needles, you may see some of them that say gauge was achieved on needle X. And then it'll tell you, um, it might just say, you know, it'll say, uh, use a needle to get gauge. Now, sometimes I've seen patterns that say use a needle to get gauge and it is not totally the needle size that was used for gauge at all. And I, this, some people say that that's better because it makes you knit 
some swatches but the thing is is I don't want to I want to have a starting needle size so patterns should really have a starting needle size in my opinion I think it's a fairly commonly held opinion though so that's that one um the next thing then is um let me see so yeah needles notions how many stitch markers they won't all be there but a lot of them will um next thing then is gauge so does it have a tension swatch or does it tell you whether gauge is important or not gauge is important in most things because if you don't have gauge you don't know whether or not you're going to get the size that they tell you so without gauge size is irrelevant but I'll, again back to that in a moment um does it tell you if it's round or flat does it tell you um you know if it's knitting rows or rounds does it tell you if it should be a block wet or not does it tell you which needles were used does it tell you if it's for each individual like is it a repeat in the pattern is it just stocking stitch is it garter stitch you're looking to find out as much information about how many of these swatches or how much gauge you should get across the pattern um, and that's a really good indicator of quality in a pattern i think um the better gauge is provided to you the better um i think the pattern is i know i'm gonna people disagree with me but that's okay it's okay to disagree with me um yarn then this is where you get now you'll see various things so in pattern books and things that are designed specifically for a particular yarn, they might not give you yarn substitution op options. So I think this is a bit of a bonus. So if you have an indie pattern and they give you options for yarns, then that's a really good sign. But I get sometimes designers are under contract to write for a specific yarn, so you won't always get it. But it is useful to get how much yarn you need in terms of weight, end meterage and yardage, and also the composition of that yarn, because the three of those are really important for substituting um, if you want to substitute it later on. So those are kind of the main things. If you get a pattern and it doesn't have size, needles, gauge and yarn, your life's going to be pretty tricky. <laughs> it should also have abbreviations. Now, the more space a designer has in their paper, like their patterns, the more abbreviation detail you might get. So you might get a full definition. So some patterns will say SSK is a slip slip knit. Now it won't tell you what that slip slip knit has done. Ideally, in an ideal world, you would get a description of the designer's view of what that stitch is. Less so for more common stitches, but I like to include them. My tech editor makes me include them in mine. <laughs> um because she says that the language people use could be different. Um and I think that's good because some people do different stitches in different ways so it's useful to see that after that then things that are really useful to have is construction notes so how is this constructed now that can either be at the start if it's got an unusual construction so say for example it's knit from the center out and then the bits are joined in at the side there might be a schematic with that to show you how that happens that's a sign of a really good quality pattern it's not essential in everything though because sometimes things are constructed in quite an obvious way uh, like a hat into the round they may or may not tell you how it's constructed um then a special instruction so if there is now you won't get so this is where this is where special instructions and video tutorials overlap and it's a nice to have but i always think of it as an extra that the designer is giving you unless it's an unusual stitch that is less commonly known so for example i would describe short rows to you but i'm not going to tell you how to do garter stitch if that makes sense um, if I'm using mosaic knitting, I'll tell you what it is, but I might not tell you how to do stranded color work. I might, but I might not. It's that kind of, there's a bit of a line in there. And then how much help you get with the pattern in terms of tutorials is entirely down to the designer. They are an extra. I am, this is going to be like, oh, it's one of the reasons I started knit school as well is because designers, and I'm not a designer, I'm a pattern writer, I think myself. They don't owe us as knitters, they don't owe us lessons unless they want us to do something kind of unusual. So they, they, they owe us good quality patterns, but they don't owe us lessons and tutorials necessarily. Now I know that that is a very fine balance and I do do tutorials for mine, but I think of them as an extra that I want you to have, but I don't think that all designers are obliged to produce like in-depth tutorials, unless it's something very odd or it's a particular type of book that, you know, that it's like say some of the books behind me have very detailed picture instructions because that is what they're for. No, if they have them, awesome. If they don't have them, don't be cross. <laughs> it would be my thing. Um, I'm going on a little bit too long. Other things that I think are great, um, how, to, how to finish. So how is it blocked? care and blocking instructions, finishing instructions, how to seam it, how to make it up. Um, particularly if they have, you know, they tell you how to seam, like is it a mattress stitch, is it an, you know, is it an over darning, whatever it is. They're a great sign as well. Um, and then other things that are like bonuses, I think, like extras, 
things like checklists, picture tutorials, other yarn weights, how to substitute them, multiple yarn weight versions, baby to adult sizing in all clothing. I think that's a really big bonus. I think some designers do amazing work at that. But if I buy an adult t-shirt top pattern and it has a baby pattern in it, I'm, it's a bonus, but I don't expect it, if you know what I mean. Um, so those are kind of, they're nice to have. They're very special, but they're kind of extras. And they're, they're what I think, what am I missing? Tell me, I'd love to know what you guys think in the chat as well. If there are things that I haven't said that you think would fit really well into patterns, what bits, and those are things that will, you know, they are things to look for as markers of good patterns. So, oh, charted versus written. Most things should be written except color work. <laughs> There's a hill on which I would not die on. It's a hill on which I would, you know, wave gently at people like the thought of um, color work being <laughs> like written. I cannot. Um, everything else should probably have both written and charted instructions. I think. Right, <laughs> says I like, um, and I, I I stand correction, but I it's a hill on which I would you know fight a gentle battle with people over. I don't think I'd die in it. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing. So the next thing then is we're going to talk a little bit about size. Oh, size. So the um we talk. I want to before I start talking about size, we stop talking about things that flatter you, and I mean that is what people perceive to be nice on you, and that's good because. What I think looks nice on you is none of my, is none of your, you know, you don't, why would you care? Um, so one of the things I really like about this is that everybody wears bikinis. Now, when I was growing up, only very slim, small people could wear bikinis without being stared at and embarrassed. And I was like, I always kind of fancied one, but I definitely didn't have a bikini body. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, lads. They were very tall, thin women modeling things. <laughs> but now people can wear them and I think that's great. So there's no one should tell you not to wear something. But... When you are picking out a garment to make for yourself, ask yourself, would I buy it myself before I knit it? So would I buy it if it was available to buy? That's the only thing I would say is that some things you know yourself that might not suit you, then I might not knit them. That's my whole, my balance of flattery. But don't let anyone else tell you what you should wear. Cause like that's hopefully that will remain in the last millennium where it belongs. <laughs> Yeah, and I couldn't wear, I always felt really weird wearing skirts above my knees because I thought I had ugly knees. And I saw pictures of my sort of 16, 15, 16, 17 year old self when I was cleaning my house at home. And I just looked at her and I was like, there was nothing wrong with me. <laughs> it's like, it's really strange. I was like, ah, sure, she was grand. <laughs> but I, I gave her a hard time. Um, so I, I am definitely in the camp of, you know, where would you want? But do you think, would I, would I buy this garment, if, you know, before I knit it? That's the only thing. So now, then on to sizing. Um, for one size fits all, <laughs> kind of take into consideration, do get yourself, so what I recommend having is, I don't know if you've seen them, they're not tailor measuring tapes, they're the same, fa they're a fabric measuring tape, but they tend to be about three meters long. I think they're for measuring curtains. I have a couple of them, I think they must be curtains, because um, my mom makes beautiful curtains. Um, get one of those, because of all the things you can get yourself, they have the kind of length to give you the big shawl. So you can hold them out, get yourself a, pla a measuring tape and you can wrap it around yourself. How does it feel? And I never really thought about this, particularly about shawls where I'm like, oh, your shawls will be fine on people. I have a three skein scarf in an iron weight yarn. Love it, love it, love it. I saw a lady put it on at a show and she was only about, maybe she was like under five foot, petite woman. And it was then that I realized that it was just swamping her. My problem is that, that I can, I don't write patterns that are size inclusive on those sizes upwards, which is obviously where a lot of inclusivity is about, but I can't write them downwards because I have no perception of petite. Um, so it's kind of a, do look at one size and maybe look at the designer. Cause actually, uh, does I, I, one size items I tend to design in my size or, well, my size is I'm, down every <laughs> every different size but i can't write for petite um whereas if you see somebody who's petite their perception of what might suit somebody larger is it might be different so it's just one thing to look at well, one size is you know what is the designer's reality for that <laughs> if you're looking for a large 800 skein or you know an 850 million meter scarf i'm your woman because i'm like i like to lots of scarf lots of me <laughs> anyway that's one size so the other thing then is, right, so we, we, we've we asked ourselves, would I buy this? I try to ask myself that because you're like, oh my God, this is beautiful. But like, I'm like, mm, it might not look beautiful on me. In my own version of me. So next thing then is, the most important thing is to fit versus finished sizing. 
and this is where we can, it's easy to go wrong, particularly for garments. So when I talk about a to fit size, that is the designer's version of what they think the body type or size of person that the finished item would fit, would fit. So for example, you can have something that says, this size is designed for somebody who is a 42 bust, but the finished size of that garment might be a 46 bust, but they think it should then be worn with a bit of space. If they say that, so that is, that's something to look out for. The to fit is a kind of a recommendation or a guideline for you to follow. The finished measurement is the actual size that the pieces will be when they're finished uh, um, after you've knit them to gauge. We'll talk about gauge in a minute. So that's the difference between those two things. The difference between those sizes is what we call ease. And ease has become very, very popular. So I'm wearing a love note, love note made with loads of ease. Ease is the amount of space between you and your garment. <laughs> it's what I like to think of it as. You know, what's the difference between the item and the part of the body or item that it's supposed to fit. So say for example, something that has a finished measurement, so a to fit measurement, we'll start with to fit, so to fit a 40 bust. If the finished size of that is a 44, it means that, so the 40 fit, 44 bust, that means there is four inches of extra space in the garment. That is positive ease. So it means the ease in it, it's the movement you have, I think it's the movement, ease, is how much ease you have. That's four inches of ease. If the to fit measurement and the finished measurement are the same, it means there's no ease. So if it's a 40 bust and it's a 40 finished size and the to fit and both of them are 40 inches, that means that they're going to fit exactly all. It should rest against the body. So there's no ease in it. And then if that is a 40 inch bust, to fit but the finish size is a 38 that means there's two inches of negative ease so if the item is smaller than the finished body part that's what negative ease is it means it'll fit it'll fit tightly so if you want a nice tight garment you would knit it smaller and then it'll fit snugly over you so how you want your ease is entirely it's a personal decision in a lot of cases some designers will tell you how much is good but again decide for yourself how much you're comfortable with because ease is not in the same way that arm length doesn't get proportionately longer as you get like you know if you're not you know or shorter if you're tall or thin or but you know whatever you are uh ease is not something that you know it's not two inches of ease won't suit everybody you know if i you know two or two inches of ease might look fine on one person but two you know four inches of ease on somebody else is going to look ridiculous and you kind of have to decide for yourself what ease looks like but that's the difference that's what it is the difference between the finished size of the garment and the body part you want it to fit it also, with that, you also want to have a look at the, that your to fit and finish, your finish, your any measurement in the garment is not just there for, um, it's not just one measurement. You know, you have arm lengths, you have bust, you have shoulders, you have back, you have length from the underarms, you have the depth here as well. Always look at what they all are, because it might be that it fits you in one size, but you might want something else out of another size. So that's something to be aware of. So I will very often make a particular bust size, but if I'm making a set in sleeve, I will normally make the sleeve size a size from the larger size, because I find that bust size will fit fine, arm size won't fit as well. So that's to make sure that, you know, you know a full set of measurements from yourself. So another tip as well is to measure something that you find really comfortable to wear. So we all kind of guess our sizes. Take good quality measurements from yourself, but also take them from things that you wear every day and really enjoy wearing. That would be my thing about size as well. You know, we all have a favorite sweater or t-shirt or top that we really like. And if you're thinking about a garment, knitting a garment that's very similar to it, get the measurements of that as well so that you can kind of you have a more realistic view of yourself. We also, some of us tend to leave too much space in what we make. So you might find that, you know, you wear a top, but you were, and it's, say you're a 40 bust and you think, oh, I'll make the 44, but actually your favorite top is a 42, then you don't, you don't, don't be, you know, you don't have to overestimate your size <laughs> or underestimate it. Depends on kind of the way you are. The other thing is, it is easy to give yourself plenty of positive ease because we all want a bit of easy movement. Some garments require negative ease. So things like socks, hats, gloves to a certain extent. Um, some things are supposed to fit better, like they're supposed to be tight, um, particularly socks. So if you, um, 
don't be tempted to give yourself unnecessary space. So if the pattern is calling for you to have negative ease, um, look at what that garment is and why it might be there. Because I, one thing when I teach sock knitting, I find that most people's first pairs of socks are baggy because they gave themselves way too much room. <laughs> so that's something to look out for as well, that when you're picking your size, that it's not always supposed to be a little bit big. <laughs> you can tell I, I'm biased towards giving myself space, um, but yeah. Plus as well, if you knit something with positive ease or negative ease, there'll be times in your life when it will have more and less ease. <laughs> I have a sweater at the moment, it has less ease than I like it to have. But it still fits, but it, you know, <laughs> there should be less ease in it. Um, but that's just something to consider as well. Uh, measure yourself every time as well. Because, <laughs> you know, we all have we all different pieces of us or different things at different times. Um, and that'll be, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about there. That's size, that's how to pick one. And if you're ever stuck and you want help picking one, just ask in the Facebook group. So if you remember the Knit Matters Facebook group or even comment here, and I love helping people pick the right thing. Um, of course, obviously. So that takes me to, oh, and that then takes me to gauge and size. So gauge and size are directly related to one another. So I know that for some people swatching is still a dirty word. I think of swatching as, if I'm knitting a hat, I probably won't swatch. It's a swatch in itself. Socks the same, which is why these socks are a little bit, actually to be fair, they're probably fine around the leg, but they would have been too loose around the foot, so I had to adjust as I went. Um, if you're not gonna swatch, be ready to adjust as you go and measure as you go as well. That's my first thing. That's how I know these are probably a little bit bigger than I want, um, is because I was measuring them as I went and I tried the sock on as I went and I was like, right, I'm gonna have to adjust for the piece where the fit matters most, which is the foot. So definitely, if you're not gonna swatch, measure as you go the number of people who say to me i knit this garment and it's absolutely massive and i and they're like it's too big or i've knit this and it's too small and i say to them did you measure it as you went and the answer is no that i'm like mm, you measure as you go check your gauge as you go if you're not going to need a swatch but for the people who can't live without a swatch i always think that so for socks hats small things is it a big deal possibly not garments where you're going to spend maybe eight, 40, 60, 80 hours knitting something, 150, depending on what you're knitting, it's worth that. And think of it as a, like an exciting part of knitting. No, don't think of it as an extra, think of it as an exciting part. Um, so I do recommend it. And the reason, why would we do that? So something that I, took me ages to figure this out when I started, it was when I started designing that this dawned on me. You're probably thinking, wow, that, that was, knitting is like wallpapering or flooring, putting flooring on a carpet. You are trying to decide how much of it you need in order to cover a certain amount of you. So for example, and I, I'm not explaining that really well, but you know, you need to know uh, how much, how many widths of wallpaper by how long you need it. And that's what gauge swatches are essentially. They're basically telling you how many stitches and how many rows cover a particular area. And if you have the right number of stitches in this area, when the designer multiplies it up to the garment, that's how they work out the number of stitches you need for a cast on. It's how they measure how many rows you're going to need for the like for the body length. And that's why it's really important to get a gauge. So for example, you're going to have a gauge swatch maybe about this. I would recommend five inches by say five inches per garment. I know it's not for everybody, but that's why it's important because the designer is going to take, they've taken that small piece of pa 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 well, fabric in their case and gone, right, if you have 30 stitches here, that means that you're definitely going to have to cast on this many stitches. So that's why it's important. So if you are out and your gauge is not the same, you will not get the same finish size as the designer. Now there are loads of options for changing as well. So you can knit with a bigger needle, a smaller needle. You can change the yarn. You can adjust, like just acknowledge that it's different and then change the pattern as you go. So measuring it, it's about knowing how close or how far away you are from the pattern as well. It's not about being scolded. It's not about <laughs> jumping in, but it's about knowing that it's, it's important. Um, so things I recommend is checking if, particularly if it has different stitch patterns, you should definitely check, like if it has stocking stitch and some lace, I would try both because you are, or I would try the one that's most important. So for example, in the, um, where is it? in the Katzen. If I got, I knew that if I got my stocking stitch gauge correct, my stocking stitch was around my lace, I knew that I would get the length about right. 
And then once I knew my gauge across from my lace, I was pretty happy that my stocking stitch gauge would be okay. So it's kind of deciding what part of it is most important that will be down to the pattern. So for example, in this, um, I was happy to live with the lace whatever way it came out. So I don't think I swatched the lace. Actually, to be fair, did I swatch this? No, I actually didn't swatch this because there's loads of ease in it. So I figured it would fit me even if my gauge was tight because I know I'm a tight knitter. And that's something you probably know about yourself as well. I bet you if I ask, if anyone is in the chat, are you a loose or a tight knitter? Uh, do let me know. Um, you'll know yourself as well. If you tend to be tight, you tend to be loose. Sometimes it's okay to take a bit of a punt on it, but the better fit you want, the more likely you are to have to do a nice gauge swatch. But there are loads of options as well. And don't think of it as something that, my biggest advice is don't think of it as something that is kind of boring. Think of it as something that's like an investment in yourself. Like it's exciting. It's also niching. Like why would you not want to knit some more extra things? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my big thing about swatching is that it's necessary. And it's also... As you get more and more indie designers entering um, and you get more like and, and people ask for more and more substitution options, the more likely you have to you have to swatch because it, it, gone are the days when you could just go in and buy the yarn and the pattern all together and they were only really so that way. And we all had long straight needles and you got about the same friction in the needle <laughs> that you always got. Like everybody has a pair of long metal ponies, I imagine, somewhere in their homes. Those days are kind of gone a little bit with new tools tools react differently to the yarns the yarns are a little bit less standard um they're also way more exciting <laughs> i think um and there's a way more variety so you can knit a pattern with a lot of different yarns so doing a swatch is a great investment in yourself it's up to you though but i do if you're not going to swatch measure as you go for the love of all that is good <laughs> my other thing as well and i might talk about this in a different episode is um Ask yourself when you're knitting it, particularly when you're knitting top down sweaters in the round and you are knitting to a particular length, make sure you in your mind know that if your yarn is going to, if your gauge swatch, when you wash it and it's way longer, then don't knit all the way to the full length of the garment because it's just going to end up around your knees. So there's a lot to consider as well in that kind of thing. So yeah, that's kind of my little chat about that. Um, and I guess I'm going to open for little questions. I have about or four or five minutes if anyone has any questions um but yeah that's the sizing chat um i i just it's something that really fascinates me i'm just gonna look at my notes because I, I it it interests me because it's we don't really talk about it i i don't know the last time i saw people talking about how important it is to really look at size detail and how it relates to gauge and the fact that gauge is what a designer uses to determine all of the aspects of the sizing of a garment really um, and if you don't get that right then it's a bit of a you know it, it, it can ruin a garment very easily um, and now we're into ask me anything <laughs> i know i'm still five i might do them in different colors next week um but yeah so that is if you have any knitting questions i have about two or three minutes and i'm just gonna sit you can ask me uh questions i have been asked this week i'm trying to think um I don't think I've seen any knitting questions. I've had requests for techniques, which I will be doing. Um, but I don't think I've seen anyone. I'm trying to think of in any group that I've been in recently. Um, have I seen anything? I did see, um, <laughs> I did, I did see a, um, it is possible to felt superwash. Uh, not my my error this week. But someone else I know has managed to felt super wash. So do be careful. Like even though it is, um, you know, you can put them off in a machine. Do be careful with them, particularly if they're garments. Also, if you have a garment um, and you put them into a hot wash and you 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 know you agitate them too much, they will felt. Uh, so that's something I was talking to someone about this week. Um, I think that was it though. Uh, other things people oh another question I'm asked all the time is about sock wonders which needle which hand do you put the longer needle in um, and that goes for the chogu shorties as well where I've kind of combined them I combine my shorties I have one long and one short to make them behave like sock wonders um, in your right hand if you're right handed knitter and in your left if you're left handed knitter it's in your dominant hand um, generally even for fair uh, continental where your yarn is in the left hand um, definitely use your in your right hand it's in the hand that you do most of the motion with um because it's it, it gives you that extra length it's why they brought out sock wonders because if you guys remember back when mini circulars were really popular at the start um 
mini pattern uh, mini needles came out they all had really short tips and they were like uh, a di very difficult to knit with how do I feel about paper patterns versus electronic patterns I tend to print a lot of mine if I'm honest although I will follow I will follow an electronic pattern I still tend to print mine if I have a book I photograph them and then I print them out as well so yeah I'm a bit of a paper pattern person um, and actually an interesting one um, and I apologize I don't know who you are because obviously I can't see all your comments I, I can though let me just I can show it da, da, da. very exciting how do I feel about paper and electronic patterns isn't that great um, <laughs> I know I'm fine um, yeah paper patterns for me but it doesn't mean I will, I, I will print them. Like, but I'm spoilt as well when I say that. I do have, um, I have a laser printer because of the business. So I do print a lot of my patterns. Um, but yeah, I like to, I mark them off. I'm trying to find them. If I look here, I think if I go in here, I have the cats imprinted. But I, I will use them. But I do, I, no, if I'm honest, I, I'm not a great person for the knitting apps. Printed patterns with colored bits and ticking off. <laughs> I make my own ticking off things in Excel. I like it ticking off like that. Funny though, I was using um, Helen Stewart's pattern. She, uh, curious, she's Helen Stewart, uh, curious Handmade Helen. Uh, her ticking off the patterns. Great. I wouldn't be my really useful, very descriptive. Great if you were a knitter. For me, I worked out the repeats and then worked the repeats out because I'm so used to the repeats. And it made me ask an interesting question about that gap between real in depth and then moving on to shorter patterns and how do we make sure that people can transi transition between them and I think that's part of why I'm having this, you know why I'm doing um this pattern and writing bits and pieces is because it's it's learning how to use different patterns in different situations so that's it my dears if there's no more questions I'm gonna go next week I'll be back and I'm gonna do I'm gonna talk about things and I'm actually gonna show you what they look like when they're knit fingers crossed I'm gonna talk about things like um I'm gonna show you how to reverse all shaping reverse all shaping <laughs> if I see it in a pattern I'm just like off with you go away reverse all shaping um and then think like while doing this do this um and a few more of those kind of funny repeating things that you might see and how to do them uh, a reverse all shaping I not my favorite <laughs> I think the more experienced you get the more you know leaning and which direction increases and decreases leaning but I think as a new knitter I'm just like you want me to do the work <laughs> but it is a throwback to be fair it is a throwback to when patterns had to be smaller because they were going into um publications I think I've only ever seen it in printed patterns I don't know if I've ever seen it in a like a, a digital only pattern so I think it's something that we now don't have to do when we're writing patterns that are going to be produced you know electronically and then we put the printing on to somebody else but that's a choice that you can then make. Um, whereas if you have pattern books, I know there's a few of the pattern books behind me. I know for a fact that there are repeat all shapings in those, but again, it's about paper, you know, and price and how much is a pattern book gonna be because pattern books are often done in color um, and that makes it expensive anyway. So it's kind of a, a balance. But anyway, we'll talk about that next week. So that's it, my dears. I hope you all have knitting planned. I'm gonna go now. I'm going to knit netter with my girlies from uh, knit school. And uh, I hope you guys have knitting planned and I'll be back time next week for another round of chat i will get on to more controversial things as well by the way but i'm not ready yet oh, nice and gentle <laughs> keep knitting keep <laughs> yeah, keep knitting happy right my dears have a lovely evening and i will see you all again next week